Hello my floss tube friends, Liz from Hello from Liz Matthews here, floss tube number nine. Today is November, two days after Thanksgiving, one day after Black Friday. At this point, I've kind of lost track of the days. There has been so much going on, not only for me, I'm sure for you as well, tis the season, right? Things are getting really, really busy. I have missed you guys so much and there has been so much that I've been looking forward to sharing with you. I just haven't had time to sit down and get everything together and organized to share all of the things with you, but now is the time we're gonna dive right in. I have life updates, I have plans, I have, I have things I need you guys to help me with and I also have a really fun idea I like to present to you at the end of the video that hopefully you will participate in and at least enjoy. So let's just dive right in. Excuse me for that. I shared in my last video, which was three weeks ago now, which is crazy, that I did give my resignation at work and that I would be focusing full time on building this cross stitch punch needle fiber art design business of mine and that I would be working through the end of the month. And that day actually came and now has gone. It was Wednesday, just two days ago. So it was a very emotional week here for me. Um, very sad, but also really exciting and just truly knowing that I'm on the right path and to be following my dreams is something I never really thought I would get to say that I'm doing. And it's just literally a dream come true and it's so wonderful. There are women at work that I'm gonna miss so much that have become really good friends, but I know that we'll stay in touch and that I will be a happier, a happier person now as I follow my own path and my own dreams. So we closed that chapter on Wednesday. I got home, we had some celebratory champagne and now it has just been plan making and figuring out what the next step is and where we go from here. We've got all of that figured out and I do want to share those plans with you for the new year. They're very exciting and I am just so thrilled to see what the future brings. So that was this week all before Thanksgiving. Then for Thanksgiving we got together with my in-laws and my immediate family. It's a rather small group but it was perfect. We had great food, great company, and we also got together with some friends later in the evening which was perfect. I hope you guys also had a great day. It was just so nice to just stop, connect, unwind, and then relax. Yesterday was awesome. We had leftovers. I did so much stitching. It was just the perfect day. Aside from that, I did venture to my local needlework store. I am not a Black Friday shopper, but I had been dying to get to my LNS, which is the Stitching Post in Catonsville, Maryland to just kind of do some research. Now that I'm immersing myself in this field, I wanted to see what was out there. I wanted to see what designers are doing, what's popular, how, how stores lay out inventory, what groups well together, what the need is, all the things. Basically, it was just a big research trip. It was awesome. I think I spent a little over an hour there just browsing, just looking and learning and just being excited, getting more and more excited. So that was my day yesterday. I did no other Black Friday shopping. I don't know about you, but there isn't really anything that could have gotten me into a big box store yesterday. Nothing, nothing. But I hope if you did venture out that you were successful, safe, and had a lot of checks off your list at the end of the day. So that was yesterday. I have some haul I wanna share with you. Um, after I finish my little update, got some good things. But what I also wanted to share with you is that last weekend, I was also at a cross stitch store. It was my mom's local LNS in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. It was called, it is called In Stitches. Pat owns that store there. It is a jam packed, has everything, awesome community little store. And on Saturday, this past Saturday, my mom and Pat co-hosted a stitch-in, which was held in the barn right across the street from the shop. And this was actually my first ever stitch-in. I had never been to one. It was so awesome. It was from 10 to four. You could shop, you could stitch, you could just sit and talk. We had snack, mom had snacks, I should say. And it was so wonderful. I met the most charismatic, great women. It was so nice to sit there and know that 
no matter how different all of us were, and we were quite different ages, jobs, what we were stitching, there was always that common, that common um, interest. We were all there working with our hands, working with our fibers, and it was so wonderful. And it made me really realize how much I want to be part of the cross stitch fiber art community, not only to be putting products out for you guys to love and to enjoy and to work on, but to also connect and be part of everybody's everyday life and to make those connections. And I don't know, it was a very deep takeaway for a stitch in, but it's, it's what I came away with. And it was such a wonderful day. I was really, really happy to see that Deb and Liz came by to join us. In Stitches is also their local needlework store. This is Deb and Liz of Country Stitches. I was in store uh, buying some needles because I was nothing if not unprepared. More on that later. And I heard a familiar voice at the cash register and I was like, oh, that's Deb. So I had a little brush with fame, I guess you could say, <laughs> the closest I've ever come. But they were just so lovely and it was so nice to sit and chat with them. They are exactly who you see in in their videos. And I've got to tell you, I would love to stitch with them again. I know they have some upcoming dates at In Stitches in December. I will try to post them below, get my hands on them and post them below because I would love to go spend more time with them. They were so wonderful. All of the ladies I met at the Stitch In were so wonderful. Michelle, Wendy, everybody, thank you so much for welcoming me and making me feel like I belong there. I really appreciate it so, so much. It was such a good day. One thing that went horribly wrong is that I was supposed to bring my models so that people could see finished products and maybe purchase some punch needle patterns from me, including the three new winter trees that I finished the night before in a rush to present at the Stitch In, which I completely blanked on and left in my car in Maryland when I headed north to Pennsylvania for the Stitch In. So big mistake, big mistake, but I went with it. The day was still perfect, just absolutely perfect. I was bummed I didn't get to share my finished products with some people because I think they turned out so gorgeous. And I will show you when I show you my works in project, works in progress and my FFOs, but I was really happy with how they turned out and bummed that I didn't get to share the finished product with everybody. So that was last weekend, the stitch in, so good. I cannot wait to do it again. I would love to host one. I would like to attend some. If anybody is local and know of any coming up, please let me know. Maybe we can go together. So, um, sorry, I'm looking at my notes here, trying to be prepared. I have recorded this about four times now before I like lose my train of thought or something goes wrong. And you know, I don't edit my videos because that's just too much to handle. So I'm trying not to repeat myself and follow all my notes down here. But I think that's basically it for my life updates. That's plenty. It's plenty, right? I have not started decorating for Christmas yet. It's on, it's always like the next thing on my to-do list, but never the thing I absolutely have to do that night but I'm hoping tomorrow I have pulled all the boxes out. I'm hoping that Joe will help me carry them upstairs and we can decorate to some good music, some hot chocolate or warm coffee in the morning. Hopefully next time you see me, this will be a winter wonderland. Wish me luck. Um, I did get some haul from the stitching post. I'm trying to keep the stitching post and in stitches correct in my mind. So I wanted to show you what I picked up. It's not too much all fun, all necessity. One thing actually is needles. I got some needles. Um, I'm kind of learning as I go what the right size is. Turns out that I hadn't been using the right size. I had been using needles that were way too large and really kind of left me fumbling and taking way too much time as I was working. So I traded in, we didn't trade in, I got new needles, size 28, and they are working so, so well. I've already opened this Bohin France pack and it, I love them so much. They have 
just the right amount of give and bend to them. The size is perfect. I was a little panicked they were too small, like um, gauge and lengthwise, but no, they have been a dream to sit with. So if you haven't tried these and you're looking for a good needle, I totally recommend these after just two days of one day of working with them. I love them. Bohe needles, size 28. I stitch on 36 count linen with two strands of floss. I also picked up the Just Cross Stitch 2009 ornament issue. I know how much you guys love the Christmas and Halloween ornament issue. So this is mostly just for some research so I can see what's going on in the market and see what you guys are loving. Okay, did you see that little bird? So cute. I hope that was in focus. But I'm gonna pour through this as soon as I have time. Um, I'm really excited to see that. And hopefully next year, fingers crossed, I might have a piece in there. We'll see. I'm putting all of these hopeful thoughts out into the world and, and we'll see what happens. I also got a piece of Picture This Plus Linen. They had a great collection selection at the store. And because I was able to pick this out in person, I wanted to grab it. How cool is this? I can see why maybe somebody was not attracted to this because of the like big blank space in the middle. But to me, that's what I love. I love that I can work something here and then there's more discoloration on the side. And it's just one of the reasons why picking this out in person was the way to go. So when I got home yesterday, I posted on my Instagram a picture of the haul that I'm sharing with you now. And Picture This Plus contacted me and just thanked me for sharing their linen and told me about a sale. They are running for Black Friday and I asked them if I could share the coupon code with you and they said, yes, please. So I wanted to give that to you in case you were in the market for any picture of this plus hand dyed linen because it is totally gorgeous. So the deal is it's 10% off the first 50 orders on Cyber Monday. Did I say Black Monday? I meant Cyber Monday in two days. So it's 10% off the first 50 orders on Cyber Monday if you use the code CM10. Cyber Monday 10, CM 10. So this might be the time to stock up or maybe Santo wants to check some things off his shopping list. I don't know. I cannot wait to get more of this. It is so gorgeous and I love, love, love the modeling. I also have some Weeks Dye Works thread um, linen to show you. And you can see they're very different products, very different looks, both appropriate in different ways. But I definitely want to get some more picture of this plus linen. My mom uses it and her, I love how her finishes look. So I did snag just one little piece of that. <laughs> and then I was looking for some fiber for the next new piece I'm working on. And I, you know, I'm new. This is all exciting. And I wanted something other than DMC because I'm being fancy being extra for sure. So I was looking at Weeks Dye Works. I was looking at all the threads, trying to find something with a good green range. And I see Needlepoint Silk. My thought process is, oh, my mom loves Needlepoint Silk. She used that for years. It must be good. I should try it. So let me show you the tag here so you know what I'm talking about. So this is Needlepoint Silk. Um, doesn't matter. Tag doesn't matter. So I pick out my colors and I'm, I notice that there's no price listed and I'm just thinking, okay, well, how expensive can thread be, right? So this is what I got. I got one extra in case I didn't like all of the greens that I chose. And I get to the register and I find out that Needlepoint Silk turns out is the most expensive fiber that I have ever purchased. <laughs> So I'm not sure that you'll see it appearing in all of my designs, but it will certainly be in this one because there's no way I'm not using it now. But I was kind of curious what your thoughts are on this. Are you someone who is deterred, turned off? What are your feelings when a designer uses a thread that 
to be honest, feels like it's astronomically priced. <laughs> I, I am truly curious. Do you also think, hey, I'm gonna splurge this something made by hand with love? It's worth it. I will spend the money to have an extra nice product. I know this is a nice product. It glides beautifully, it's silk, it's nice. It's nice. This will be a dream to work with, but is it worth it? Give me your thoughts on that. I would truly, truly appreciate knowing what you think. I will, of course, of course, provide a DMC conversion on my chart, but I am going to use these because I paid for them. So that's just a little tangent for you there about my haul from yesterday. I'll keep you posted. I'll keep you posted on what I think. I will probably start working with those tomorrow. I'm finishing up a project now. I'm a pretty monogamous stitcher. I like to get through something before I start something else. So that's probably coming by Monday at the latest. I'll share on Instagram what I think. Have you ever stitched with this? Don't you love it? It's, it's pretty dreamy. Anyway, <laughs> I'll talk about that. Um, the other fibers that I got were linen from Weeks Dye Works. This piece, oh, I love this piece so much. Unfortunately, I know the camera is not showing this very well. This is a green blue dream. It is dyed the color Dove. If you are familiar with Weeks Dye Works over dyed linen um, threads, excuse me, I always get those words confused. If you are familiar with Weeks Dye Works over dyed threads in color Dove, that's what this is. And I just don't think it's going to show well, but it is so beautiful. There's slight modeling in here. When I saw the sample of this piece, I was immediately inspired. So when I received this in the mail, it's the piece that I got started on right away. It is the first original design that I'm doing for 2020 released at market. And this, this is the inspiration behind all of it. So I am just loving this so much. Again, I'll share on maybe Instagram a color corrected photo so you can see what it looks like IRL. I also got some Weeks Dye Works straw, kind of yellow brown, which I like. This is Weeks Dye Works light khaki, much more of a neutral. There is some yellow modeling in there. Again, not like Picture This Plus. So like this is Picture This Plus versus Weeks. Both so lovely, but completely different finished looks. And then the last thing I got is Weeks Dye Works. What are you? Beige, 36 count beige. I'm very curious as to why there's a hot sticker on some of these. I'm leaving it because I like it. But that was my Weeks Dye Works linen haul. There is a lot of stitching in my future and this is probably gonna go way faster than I ever thought. So that wraps up the haul portion of my video. Um, I have some shout outs. There are some people that I have been really loving and I've been making an effort to watch more videos to find less well-known floss tubers, but there are three people that have really, really stood out to me and I have enjoyed their content. I've enjoyed everything about their videos lately. First is Michelle Bendy of Bendy Stitchy. She is really all about this community. She is everywhere and she is just so lovely. I have connected with her on Instagram lately and I've loved getting to know you, Michelle. Thank you so much for what you put out there and what you add to this community. I'm so happy to know you and I really, really enjoy listening to you. I also feel the same way about Olivia from Pumpkin Hollow Quilts. She was one of the very first uh, floss tubers I discovered, and she recently did floss tube episode number 23, in which she described perfectly what a sal is. She and a friend of hers are hosting one in 2020, and for someone who's kind of new to all of this and didn't know all the finer details, she explained it all to the T. So if you are also interested in learning what a sal is, or maybe joining a great sal, you can watch Olivia's video. Again, it was number 23 and she has pumpkin hollow quilts. I will list all of this information in the description box below. Lastly, I discovered Ellen, Maximum Cross Stitch Power Hour. Ellen, you're awesome. I love your authenticity. 
I love your diverse range of finishes. You are a power stitcher for sure. I am always blown away at how much you've produced and I thank you for taking us along on your journey with you. So big shout out to those ladies. Really, really happy to know you, even if it's just digitally. Hopefully one day it will be in real life and we can give each other a big hug. I'm a big hugger. Um, let's talk works in progress and FFOs. I have a cross stitch work in progress. I am doing this Prairie Schooler. Oh, don't you love Prairie Schooler? Santa, this is 1993 Santa. My stepmom, Mare, wanted this stitched for Christmas. Actually, truth be told, for Christmas last year, she gave me a set of 12 of these and said she wanted all 12 for Christmas this year. And this is how far I've gotten on one. I think, I think it's gonna be more like a one a year kind of gift. So this is how far I've gotten. I am cranking away. I am a pretty quick stitcher. I know this won't be a problem to finish in time for the holidays, but that's a work in progress couple more hours this little dude will be done. I just love the Prairie Schooler Santa so much. All the Prairie Schooler does I love. So that guy is a whip. And then the only other thing I have to show you is my FFOs for the year. These are going to be the last pieces you see from me this year. The rest will just be in preparation for 2020 and all that's coming next year. So these are my trees, which I shared on Instagram and you guys loved. And I loved your responses so much. It warmed my heart. It was just so awesome to see all of you guys loving these and responding so well to them. These are my winter trees. So there are three in this series. I'll go through all of them with you. They are all available now in my Etsy shop. They are currently just available as cross punch needle patterns, not cross stitch. Let me be clear. These are not available as cross stitch patterns yet, but they will be within the next two weeks. But if you are a punch needle artist or like the look of this tree and you want to give it a try, you can order them right now. They are each sold individually, but they pair together really, really well. Let me get a free hand here. Um, and what I really like about these two is that they are purely winter themed. They're not just for the holiday season and they are not necessarily Christmas either. They are good for year round. These colors, season round, they're good for season round, not year round. These colors could easily be changed to accommodate any uh, decor theme, any style, any look that you're going for. This is just an icy winter tree. And then this guy is, of course, the first day of Christmas. It is a partridge and a pear tree. So this is called first day of Christmas tree, friendship quilt tree, and iced winter tree. This is all, these are all part of the 2009 winter tree collection. I am calling them that because there will be a tree collection every year moving forward, 2020, 2021, you know, all the years. And they will always be a set of three. You can look for more coming. And I also think that we'll have more throughout the year, not just winter trees. So there's a lot more coming from me with this look. I love these so much. They are so, they're so cool. I just love them. We put, I put all of them on an antique flower frog base and used a real branch here as the tree trunk. I did finish them dimensionally. There is foam core in the middle of all of them and Spanish moth sticking out the bottom. One of the biggest questions I've got since releasing these patterns, got gotten, one of the biggest questions I've gotten since releasing these patterns is a finishing tutorial. And that is coming tomorrow. I wanna to make sure that you guys have all of the information you need to finish these just as I did if you choose to make dimensional trees. So that's coming tomorrow. There is a just a, like a medium-sized description in the chart. 
it's always easier for me to see how something is finished rather than read it. So I want to make sure that I provide that. Tomorrow we'll be going through how to finish a tree together. Um, I also plan on offering some antique frog, flower frog bases in my shop as soon as I can get my hands on some. And there was something else I wanted to share with you about these. Oh, in the pattern, on the punch needle pattern, if you choose not to make a three-dimensional tree, you will see that there is a tree trunk drawn. So you can just punch that as an entirely flat piece, maybe frame it, do, do whatever you'd like with it, finish how... how Finish it however you'd like, but there are options. So you can do standing tree, entirely punched tree. I wanted to give you options and not make anybody feel intimidated or uncomfortable. But that is my last FFO for the year. My plans moving forward, let me fill you in on all of this. In January, I'm going to have a soft launch of my cross stitch line. It's going to include all of the best sellers from my releases 20 years ago when I had Elizabeth's Garden. I'm taking all the best sellers, I'm revamping them, kind of bringing them to my style now, changing them, some minor, some major. All of that will be explained on each chart. So in January, I will release those patterns, a few of those patterns, more to come, a collection of those patterns, as well as cross stitch version of the punch needle patterns that I have already released. So that will all be in January and in February. And then in March, I am attending market with my mom, which will be the big official launch of Hello From Liz Matthews cross stitch line. There will be a lot of new products products, designs that I'm working on now. I say products because I'm coming from the jewelry industry. There will be a lot of new designs that I'm working on now, that I am designing now, that I'm finishing now, all launching, debuting at market, Nashville, March, 2020. So that's kind of a rough outline of what my spring and beginning of the new year look like. It's going to be really good and it's going to be really exciting. And I'm going to share as much as I can along the way as possible. So stay tuned. Again, as always, I have to say, <laughs> I am most active on Instagram. If you want to follow me over there, it's hello from Liz Matthews. You'll get all the sneak peeks soonest, all of the behind the scenes, all of the information the fastest there. Woo! Gotta catch my breath. I knew I would get going at some point. Um, I have two more kind of fun things to share with you. One is, well, it's not a share. It's more of an ask. I am looking for model stitchers. I have three amazing women who are model stitching for me right now. Uh, Steph from Stitch Goes My Heart found two of her friends and they are all doing model stitching for me currently. They are beautiful stitchers and I am so happy to be working with them. But I have a lot of products that need stitching and I don't want to inundate them or overwhelm them. So I'm putting a call out for, for you. If you are interested in being a model stitcher, if you know somebody who is, please send them my information, send me their information. You can DM me on Instagram. You can email me. I will put my email address in the description box below email me. Let's start a conversation about this. It might be perfect for both of us. What I'm looking for are people who are comfortable stitching on 36 count linen with two strands of floss. I know that might be a little odd or unusual. It's how I was taught. Mom taught me how to stitch that way. And it's just my preference as far as color fill and making things look really rich and filled in as well as my preference size wise, 36 count. Always seems to give a, a great size for a finished model. So if you are interested in more information, I would love to chat with you. I would love to see examples of your work. It can just be pictures on Instagram. You can, you can send me there, link me there. That's no big deal. I'm also interested in what your rates are as well as your availability, because in reality, I'm hoping to get a couple more models stitched by mid-December, which is going to be here before you know it. So if you think it might be a good fit, we can talk about that. Contact me, the info's below, we'll chat. And then I wanted to wrap up this video, excuse me, um, with some